Hey, Richard Murbach here with the Tom George Yacht Group. Today we are going to walk through a 37 Invincible Catamaran 2021 model, brand new boat. Um, we've, uh, we've been really excited about these cats. Um, we're doing really well with them. This is the 37. Larger, they make a 40, which is a pretty similar boat. And then from there, they also make a 46. Uh, down from the 37, they make a 35. That can be powered with twins or quads, depending on what your options are. And then also a 33, which uh, they're finishing hole number one right now. We're really excited about that boat. That's going to be a twin engine cat, uh, as well as Invincible's uh, mono hauls um, from 33 to 42. So uh, again, 37 catamaran, we'll walk through the boat. Starting at the transom, obviously your big live well here in the back, uh, 60 plus gallons, um, pressurized live well. We have uh, a three pump sea chest on this boat because we also have a secondary uh, 70 gallon live well here in the floor. Um, this hatch right here, nice and easy, flip that open. Uh, you got another 70 gallons of live well space there in the floor. And as I mentioned, the three pump sea chest system in the bilge here, uh, so you have a backup pump uh, for either live well if one goes down during a tournament. On friction hinges, which is really nice, I uh, had about 60 blue runners here in the other day uh, when we were fishing the tournament. They were super happy uh, all day long and it was a little rough uh, and, and they, were, they were happy all day. So. Uh, power on this boat, uh, this particular boat, we got the quad uh, 400 Mercury's. You can also put Yamahas on the boat. In that case, it would be quad 300 Yamahas, uh, the V6's. Um, you can also do the 350's or the 300 Mercury's. Uh, got a lot of power options on this boat. Currently, with the, four, with the 400's, uh, you're 75 plus miles an hour, depending on your fuel load. Um, really fast, really very impressive boat. Uh, if you didn't really care about speed too much, and even then with quad 300s, uh, you're still probably going to be 70 miles an hour at least, um, maybe a hair better fuel economy at that comfortable 40 to 45 mile an hour cruise range. Uh, currently this boat gets 0.9 to a mile to a gallon. Uh, you might be a little bit better with the 300 Yamahas or the 300 Mercury's. Um, but if speed's your thing, these are the ones. <laughs> um, uh, in the back there's a pull out transom ladder. Uh, that is an option as well as our dive door over here in the corner. Um, uh, right here, you can see it's a two-piece system. This piece comes up and then your dive door, uh, your, your whole side comes out and there's also a ladder that is pulling right out of here. Uh, so really easy access to get in the boat. If you're a big diver, one way or the other, uh, that's a great option or if you're just hanging out at the sandbar. As you can see, we also optioned it with the jump seat here in the corner. Uh, this little folds away and now you have a nice clean uh, flush area to do to do some fishing and whatnot. Uh, moving forward, uh, the tackle station that we like the most just gives you the most versatility is this one here. You got a cooler underneath it, big space there that can be optioned with a freezer plate if you like this particular one. We did not do that, um, but that is an option from the factory we can do for you uh, or maybe even add it out after the fact. And then behind here with the diamond stitching you see, pull that down. And now we have a ton of space uh, for storage, tackle, whatever you want. Koozies. <laughs> you see it's on these big magnets here. Comes up and it's nice and tight. Uh, and then the leaning post, obviously your rod holders, cup holders here. That's all standard when you get the leaning post and more tackle storage on the port and starboard sides. Um, so going forward, and remember everything's an option here. You can pick as many rod holders as you want in the gunnel as you want. Um, you know, you're obviously you have your electronics here, but we'll talk about um, here at the helm. Uh, these LeBrock seats are options. You got the armrests, and then we decided to do the diamond stitching with the blue Invincible logo to match the hole and the blue piping. Again, really customization. You can pick the color of your stitching if you'd like uh, and have different color inserts in there. It's a lot of fun to build the boat. So. Uh, give us a call and we can do that. Um, electronics. This one, as you can see, we got the big screens in there. Those are the 22 inch Garmin's, the two Garmin VHF's, and then your Mercury gauge in the middle. Uh, and then we opted to put the uh, um, autopilot controller right here next to the steering wheel. Easy to adjust that one degree, 10 degrees to the left or right as you're running offshore. Um, and obviously we got our fusion stereo system over there 
uh, with the, the Bluetooth capability, you can run that all through your Garmin's. Everything interfaces from your Garmin screens to your Mercury engines, your fuel burn, obviously how much fuel you have on the boat, and everything like that, which leads me to um, 550 gallons of fuel on this vessel between two tanks on the port and starboard side. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, 0.9 to a mile to the gallon, uh, maybe a little bit better depending on your fuel load uh, in the seas. So uh, over a 500 mile range at 45 to 50 miles an hour, which is pretty sweet. So uh, switch panel, um, this one, another option. So you do have two options. We did the hard glass, as you can see, with the stanchions that come down here, and then it gives you that hard glass. It's a really clean look. A lot of our customers are going to that, but we still do have an option just to do your Isinglass three-sided enclosure. Uh, and then again, also we did option to do the Isinglass wings on this one. Um, vessel of this size, 500 mile range. You never know if you might run into a rainstorm there in June, July, going down to the Keys. So nice to have those on hand uh, in case you do pop up into a little rainstorm. Uh, overhead lights, all color changing, um, red, blue, white, we can option even more undergunnel lighting. Um, all that stuff is, is, is pretty much standard uh, on all of our boats. But give us a call if you want to do something custom and, and we can do that for you. So um, let's peek forward. We'll real quick peek in the, uh, the head here. Um, coming forward, pretty simple. Marine grade head, that is an option. Remember we are on a catamaran. So you're not gonna step down in there. But still plenty of room, sit down, use the toilet and then you have great access into all your electronics back there, your battery switches, uh, batteries themselves, and everything else. They, they do a great job with their wiring, pull that panel back, and it's obvious, very obvious about what goes to what, um, so you can diagnose anything on your own. Moving forward, again, another option. You can do totally different things here. We decided to do the coffin box rather than the extended console coffin, as they would call it. Um, that does give you a little bit more free flowing space in and out of here and then obviously the separation of a cooler and then also your, um, which will lift this up, your box here. So if you're somebody that likes to fish a lot, um, you know, maybe having this free flowing space is a little bit better, uh, it's, it's totally up to you. Uh, the extended console coffin, this would come back and it would give you more space in the bow. So there's obviously those trade-offs. Um, but having two separate pieces, uh, if you want to use this just as a fish box, and then having the cooler there, as well as the cooler behind the helm, gives you a ton of space for drinks and uh, sandwiches and whatnot. Um, and failed to mention it back there, but uh, you got the two fish boxes on the port and starboard side. Those are absolutely ginormous. Um, those are great. Shoot, you could even use the floor well as a little fish box, maybe for some, uh, some, some snappers, you know, yellow tail and mangrove snapper, something like that. Just a little easier to clean in and out, just a smaller capacity. And then you could stick a big old tuna in either one of those on the port and starboard side. We also have a box underneath here, underneath our floor. That comes up and it comes all the way forward. You got over eight feet in there, so you can stick some rods in there. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, you could put a lock on, on, on here if you wanted to, to lock that up. Uh, if you're somebody that makes the runs over to the Bahamas and you like to leave your rods on the boat, you could change this to a, a locking system and put a lock on there if you wanted to. Uh, again, I mentioned the windshield, that's a big option. Consider that when you're building the boats. Um, you know, the hard glass, uh, maybe a little easier to clean um, with a scrub brush and whatnot, but, um, you know, simplicity is also something that some people like. The ability to, to change that Isinglass out over the years. If you're somebody who thinks you're going to keep the boat for 10 plus years, uh, the Isinglass could be a good option for you. So, um, and then lastly, kind of forward, we'll just mention all the space you got up here. Um, the one thing, you know, I did mention earlier, we were fishing at Kingfish tournaments last weekend um, and uh, had those blue runners back there. We were fighting a fish. Most of the time the fish was up here in the bow. We were able to come over, and he was deep. He didn't want to come up. We were able to come over, grab him uh, with, a, with an eight-foot gaff. You know, uh, a lot of these guys have 12-foot gaffs. Your, your water line is not too bad, so you can reach over, grab that fish, pull him in the boat, slide him in the box, and keep moving on. So uh, good access to the water line up here is important. Uh, and even if you wanted to add a trolling motor, we're having some people do that uh, with these larger shafts, um, you know, 80-plus-inch shafts 
you got plenty of room to reach down in there. Uh, this one we did the anchor windlass. Uh, you see you got great access into the road and chain here as well. Uh, when you have that option, they do put the hole there. If not, then you just have a little bit better access in here uh, for your regular anchor. But um, the anchor windlass, as well as the control uh, back there at helm, and a control here, depending on if you're by yourself, if you got somebody else on the boat with you. And then, obviously, huge storage on either side. These are separated, these three things. So I like to use these as big fender storage. Um, if you didn't have the anchor windlass and anchor ball down in there, that's great. Uh, so you could stick, you know, three big old fenders in there and then an anchor ball on the other side and maybe some extra life jackets or something else. So a um, lot of options here, a lot to go over. Really awesome boats with Invincible. Again, this one's a 2021. Not much has changed, but a couple little updates here and there as they continue to progress. Uh, a couple more options and, uh, and some, some cool stuff like that freezer plate. Uh, and joysticks and everything else. This one's got the Optimus steering, so we could potentially add that joystick for you after the fact if that's one something you wanted to do, uh, or leave it plain. The boat spins great just by itself. Really easy to drive these boats, and surprisingly, as big as they are, they don't really catch the wind uh, too bad, so it's, uh, it's pretty easy to dock. So anyway, again, my name is Richard Murbach, Tom George Group, Invincible Boats. Give us a call. We'll build one for you. Thanks.